Cathedral St. John's Episcopal Church in Troy, New York. If you're visiting here for the first time, I am Mother Judith Malianic. Deacon Paul is well, but he cannot be with us today. I hope you were able to access the bullet. Uh, if not, I'll be saying the names of, of hymns and their numbers and page numbers in the book so that you can follow along. If you need to have a copy of the hymnal or prayer book, please stop by the office and or call, and we'll make sure that you're able to get a copy. In the email blast this week, we were also given a link to the coffee hour. We hope you will join us for that after the service. Our offering represents gifts that have been brought by the church or mailed in, and we remain very grateful for your generous ongoing support of the parish during this critical time. Our service begins on page 355. Our opening hymn is number 432, Oh Praise You the Lord, hymn number 432.
us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson comes from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit, inherit alone with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever, says, whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him in a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy. And he grew up, he lived in the wilderness, and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The portion of the psalm today is from Psalm 86. We'll read responsibly by whole verse. Bow down your ear, O Lord. For I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, or you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because of you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our second lesson comes from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Our graduate hymn is number 489, The Great Creator of the Worlds. And number 489.
of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. She's crying in the desert. She's lost in her despair. She thinks nobody loves her. She thinks nobody's there. But God says, I will bring a ring of fire around you, and I will be a glory in your midst. The power of my presence will bring you to your knees, and I will lift you up again, for I'm the God who sees. Yes, I'm the God who sees. Then he speaks a gentle whisper, and he softly calls her name. She feels his arms enfold her and as he holds her, and she'll never be the same, because I'm the God who never changes, and my promises are true. And when this world deserts you, this is what I'll do. This song by Nicole Mullins is based on Hagar and describes what it might have been like for Hagar to be sent into the desert. In order to appreciate this passage, I want to review the story of Hagar, the Egyptian slave who lived in the household of Sarah and Abraham, and recap the story of Abraham and Sarah. You may remember Abraham. He hears God's voice and God tells him to leave his family and country and the land of Haram promising to make of him a great nation in a foreign land. He wanders in foreign lands, twice giving his wife Sarah, whom he calls his sister, to foreign kings to protect his own skin. But twice God intervenes, visiting plagues upon these kings to protect Sarah and the marriage of Sarah and Abraham. After a series of adventures and misadventures, God visits Abraham again, and again promises to make him the father of a great nation, as numerous as the stars in the night sky. But still, as the couple ages and no children have come, Sarah encourages, encourages Abraham to take her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and have a child by her. Other ancient Near Eastern texts mention this custom, whereby a servant can bear a child on behalf of another. The text tells us that Hagar became a second wife, but she still had a lesser status than Sarah, the first wife, and still served under her. The Old Testament does not record, uh, does record occasions of polygamy, but these arise out of peculiar circumstances and are always fraught with difficulty. Scripture never suggests, go thou and do likewise. There will be, a, this will be especially a true in this narrative. Hagar does become pregnant, but then she begins to gloat. And Sarah reacts by treating Hagar so harshly that she runs away into the desert. It is there that God speaks to her. God tells her to go back to Sarah and to live with Sarah in humility. God does not get her out of the situation. There is no evidence that God challenges Sarah to grow in character. Instead, God gives Hagar a strategy so that she and her child can survive. God invites her to grow in character and maturity. Hagar names God the God who sees. He sees her plight, but he also sees her sin. She is safe because he really sees her. She declares, truly, I have seen him who looks after me. Hagar returns and gives birth to Ishmael. Now more than a decade goes by. In last week's reading from Genesis, Sarah and Abraham are visited by three angels who tell them that Sarah will have a baby in the coming year. Sarah laughs inside her tent, but the baby Isaac does indeed come. 
So as our passage begins, Sarah and Abraham are celebrating the weaning of Isaac. By this time, Ishmael is about 16 or 17. And our translation tells us he is playing with his younger brother, who is about two or three. But the Hebrew word translated here as playing could also be translated as mocking. And when St. Paul looks at this passage about Hagar and Ishmael in his letter to the Galatians, he uses the word persecuting. Sarah takes in the situation and begins to strategize. Ishmael will not respect the rights of her son Isaac, who will have a minor inheritance compared to Ishmael. And this is why she approaches her husband, referring to Hagar not as a second wife, but as a slave woman. Father Abraham is presiding over a mess in which he has been a very active player. Throughout the Abraham saga, God has defended the marriage of Sarah and Abraham and the lineage promised to them. And that is what God does here. He assures Abraham, who has a divided heart, that God will look out for Hagar and Ishmael. Abraham should indeed send them away. It is Isaac who is the child of the promise. Ishmael was not God's promise, nor God's idea. And so reluctantly, and with meager provisions, Abraham sends Hagar and Ishmael away. Now what is always striking about the literature of the Old Testament is that the heroes, compared to those in other ancient literature, are not very heroic. They get a lot wrong. They're never worthy of their calls, and yet they are led and sustained by God. In all of these stories, God loves his people heroically, in spite of ourselves. So again in the desert, again heading toward Egypt, Hagar meets God. She and Ishmael are dying of thirst, and Hagar leads Ishmael over to lie down under a bush so she doesn't have to watch him die. She lifts up her voice and weeps. Ishmael, whose name means God hears, is also crying, but he is alone and out of earshot of his mother. But God hears the voice of the boy, and God speaks to Hagar. God assures her of the promises he made when the baby was newly conceived and opens her eyes to a well. Hagar gets water and brings it to her son. They are once again united and provided for by the God who sees and hears. And now they are free. The boy is a skilled hunter, and he can now provide. God has taken a long view. The scriptures tell us that Ishmael grows up proud and defiant and marries an Egyptian, like his mother. Now, what are we to make of the story of Abraham, father of a nation? This is a story of brokenness and sin and all kinds of collateral damage. But it rather turns out okay. So what are we to make of it? Our passage from Romans asks, should we continue to let sin abound so that grace may abound? By no means. The story of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, of Hagar and Ishmael, points to God, pouring out his redemptive grace in a very broken situation. But through that situation, God reveals principles of fidelity in marriage, belief in God's promises, 
and growth in character in response to life's challenges. Today is Father's Day. I do not usually remark on secular holidays that surround us, but the confluence of these passages begs a few observations. First, we see the fatherhood of God in this passage of Genesis. God comes alongside his people, Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. God observes, listens, guides, provides, and comforts. There is a contrast between God the Father and Abraham that is instructive. Second, we see the fatherhood of God through all of the words of Jesus. With Christ, we find a loving Father, His loving Father, standing near at hand. His Father, we know, is not undemanding, but God is always present, always faithful, always drawing near, always caring. And in our gospel passage, Jesus tells us, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Earlier in this gospel, he reflected similarly. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Third, I want to give a word of encouragement to the fathers of St. John's. One of the striking things to me about this lovely congregation is that it is full of marriages that have lasted, that have stood the test of time, that have been faithful and fruitful. St. John's is full of great women, and it is also full of great men, great husbands, great fathers, great providers. Although many of your children have left the nest, I imagine that you are still fathers who see and hear nudge your children toward their best selves and come through when they need you. And psychologists tell us that if you want to be a good father to your children, be a good husband to their mother. I see the reality and fruits of this here. So, let us all be encouraged. God the Father loves us. He pays attention. He really sees us and listens to us. He knows us. He calls on our strengths. He helps us confront our sin and weaknesses. We are safe with him knowing us. God takes a long view, and he always comes through and helps us to come through because we are of great value to God. So, let us all take heart. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. <coughs> we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one from the Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, send down upon those who hold office in this state and nation the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and relieve those who are sick, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Sanctify, O Lord, those who you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain, especially Edith Otto of Arabia, Ivana Otto, Dr. James Aaron, Rose Bernard, Megan Bussing, Shirley DeCamp Thompson, Jennifer DeWolf, Jared DeWolf, Therese DeVille, Olivia Haynes, Marie Jo, Dr. Patricia Jolie, Kyle Molesky, Catherine Kraut, Cindy Schmel, Kathleen Shanley, Matt Shorter, Linda Thorburn, Dr. Lisa Thorne, Heather Tumorella, and Wendy Williams. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Give insight to medical researchers that they may discover the treatments and vaccines we so sorely need at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that your generous provision may extend to all people, that all may return to suitable and fulfilling employment. Lord, in your mercy, give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, O God, our, fa our God and Father, in whose image we are all made, you have bound us together in a common life. Look upon the people in every land, especially on those who who live with injustice, disease, poverty, and death as daily companions. Deliver us all from hardness of heart. Give strength, courage, and knowledge of your will to all who are engaged in the work of ensuring justice, who meet, make, interpret, and apply our laws and the noble principles we invoke as the basis of our society. Grant us to recognize that our shared enjoyment of the riches and blessings of this land is a matter of your grace. Make us, therefore, instruments of that grace to each other and every neighbor. Pour out your holy and life-giving spirit on all human hearts, above all our own. Give us the desire and will to remove the barriers that divide us, to renounce the suspicions that keep us apart, and to carry out the ministry of reconciliation to which you have called and sent us. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. We pray for our mission partners in Las Cajotas, Haiti, for its priest, Father Derrida, for St. Paul's, St. Anthony's, and Troy United Ministries, for other partners here and around the world. We 
pray for those in our parish who have asked for our prayers, especially Alan, Barbara, Charles, Joyce, Dawn, and the family of Fran Eng. We pray for those who have died, especially Fran Eng, George Floyd, and Harry Stackpole. We commend them to your mercy, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, Lord. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph and earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do. Protecting those who look after them, who look to them. As we look to you for love and salvation, through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our offertory hymn is number 416. For the beauty of the earth, hymn number 416.
continuing on page 367. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore According to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious Lord, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us with your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, and head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
post communion hymn it's number 433 we gather together to ask the lord's blessing number 433 Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional hymn is number 546, Awake My Soul, Stretch Every Nerve, number 546. 